All right, it's a special Michael Tulip's film room as we couldn't let that Penn State collapse go by without getting uh, Mike's opinion on this. And Mike battling through what everyone else is battling through right now with the, the congestion and everything. So appreciate it, Mike. But uh, the defense remains a concern, and this is a, a trend that has been here for two months almost, and it, it really reared its ugly head. So you're going to take us through how Illinois gave up 90 points to Penn State. Yeah. Um... I know, I know we're not going to have a pod. We're, uh, we're saving the voice here. But um, this – this I mean, the collapse was stunning, obviously. Um, and I'll actually – I have kind of a surprise in here because I, I, I want to show it to be able to contrast. But, um, but yeah, let's, let's get right into it because right now I think – the defensive side of the ball, especially over the last two months, there are certainly adjustments, like slight adjustments that can be made. There's no question, but this is a mentality thing, man. Um, and that's on the players. That's on the staff. Um, it, just the lack of value that that they're putting on the defensive end, knowing that they're one of the top offensive in, offenses in the country. Uh, you're just you're playing with fire as you get down to this this stretch run. So let's start off. This is the this is the fir- I, this is the first possession of the game. Okay, so Damascus is fighting over like that's these are the shots that you want to force and drop. All right, and they do that on the first possession. Ty does a great job coming in and rebounding. Awesome. Like you get you know you get your first you get your first stop of the game. Um, and then I think, let's see. Okay. And and then now, okay, so we got Damask forcing baseline. Coleman's trying to fight over. And and you know, Coleman has struggled a little bit with these with these bigger guys. Like he wants to get over and and you know go three quarters. It's just hard sometimes when these guys have live dribbles. If you're gonna put yourself on the opposite side. Like these guys can kind of go right around and gets a decent contest, but this is, you know, being in tune and flowing with the ball, All right? Be locked in ties, you know, ties locked in. Mm-hmm. He sees, he sees Coleman's kind of got him. So, you know, but he's still on this helpline. Terrence has got to realize here if this, if, you know, they don't get in rotation much because drops is not designed to do that. Right. But when you do like on this skip pass, that's Terrence's rotation. And like, you have to be flowing with the ball. But Ty tries to do it all, right, and still gets a decent contest. But that's a three, you know. And it starts with, it starts with Damask. You know, you can't angle your feet that way if Coleman is not in ice or down on the sideline, like they call it. Like if he's just fronting or you know trying to three quarters, you can't like you cannot be shifted fully one way or the other. You just can't do that. And you don't get into that until Coleman calls it. So he shouldn't be doing that anyways. So, again, here to start the game. You know, this one was interesting because I – I sometimes, you know, I, I like to watch the coaches' reactions on this. Mm-hmm. And Chester has quite the reaction here. So I I'm honestly I I I'm honestly I'm not sure. I mean it's not like Wahab is like a a marksman. It just felt like get your hand up. Yeah, that's that's my that's my take on this. Yeah. Is that I understand if there's a non-shooting big, but I mean, dude, he's a you know high major division one basketball player. I'll say it, Mike. This this is just a little lazy. It is it is. No, it is. It absolutely is. I think um, it's a lot of disrespect and, and laziness, right? I, I get it. I, I'm fine with Wahab taking 18 footers, but yeah, like I mean, you could jab at him here. Yeah, and Any, like anything, I if I'm Mike Rhodes, do I love Wahab shooting a 17 footer? No. Do I love Wahab shooting a semi uncomfortable 17 footer? Absolutely not. Right. And this is just way too comfortable. I mean, it doesn't look bad. No. That's the thing. 
I, I just it's, it's way it's, too comfortable. Yeah, it's just it's kind of mind blowing. And then here, the transition defense has been. It just, in my opinion, it's, it just hasn't been good. Like the, there's too much of this. Like I understand you got to locate shooters in transition. You got Hicks here, but there has to be some sort of communication here between any of these guys. Okay, like Quincy sees Quincy's up ahead of Coleman. Okay. And he's almost running even with Wahab. Like, if he just sprints, there's some sort of talk of, like, Coleman, take Hicks. I got Wahab. Like, there's just none of that. And then Coleman's jogging, right? He does this kind of hanging out thing in the backcourt. And and then just kind of points, like, hey, go, someone go get him. And that's just a lot to ask for Damas down there. Mm -hmm. So you can't – if you're Coleman, man, like, you cannot be just – jogging around and, and granted everyone had had their turn i'll say this i'm I, this is a hot take if you will i watched this whole game multiple times and if you want to know how bad the defense is there were portions of this game and this is nothing against luke goody nothing against nothing against luke goody if anything it's a compliment there were portions of this game where luke goody was your best defender i agree with that <laughs> that's an issue yeah him amani yeah, I mean, Amani, you know, Amani had had some issues at times. But the one thing with Amani is, man, I know he'll talk. Yep. Right? And you don't worry about effort with him. You got to go over on this. I mean, this is, the, this, is the, this is the scout. And this is the stuff that I think if you're Brad Underwood. And, and granted, like, the staff isn't absolved of, like, any, any blame. Because there's – we'll get into certain things that I think – could change and could could be adjusted um but man uh, if we're in drop here drop doesn't work as well when you're just head up and then you go under because what what can happen is you get buried by the roller you know and then now you got ace ball now you're off balance like there's a lot of this from quincy just off balance and kind of doesn't have his feet i mean this is they need him back man they yeah need. penn state hung 90 because you know you just you're not dialed in. You're, and and honestly, we'll, we'll get we'll get later on in the film. But the switching is horrendous. I've seen I, the amount of times that someone is coming off a screen. I'll, I'll I'll get into it later. But this is partly the surprise here. I'm showing this this from Marquette. Coleman Hawkins is on one leg in this. Mm -hmm. This team had this is like the team's you know third real game together. Okay, well just watch this. And, and I get it. I get it's November, and maybe your legs are a little bit different than November. But is your voice like? Just watch this switch. Great, good switch. Tie physical. Mm -hmm. Pullman on one leg. Switch. Good. Tie into him. He got nothing. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Slide his feet. Level off. Great contest. Where is that? That was just some bite, man. Like some tenacity. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and and that's what I said. You know, part of it is just defense. You can do this coverage and that coverage and this and move this. Around. If you don't play with that type of mentality, man, it's hard. To, it's hard to play defense. How about this? I mean, this isn't even like a perfect defensive possession, right? You don't locate a shooter in transition. They get an offensive rebound, but just keep playing hard. Get the mask. Right? Like, there's a difference there. All right, let's do some baseline out of bounds. Oh, man. And, and you know, granted, on the broadcast, they said that this was three different – three. Th it was the same play three times. It's not true. There was the same screener, you know. Hicks was was involved in the action every time, but they they put these guys in different places, okay. And I get it. Like there is, you know, you're taught when you're guarding Hicks based on out of bounds, you got to stay attached. We want to stay attached to the shooter. I just don't know. You know, ties maybe got to open up and fight over, but like. If if Ty gets hit on the screen there, what I mean, what they're, you're you're dead. Mm -hmm. So 
And the third point that I'll make is, Terrence, you might as well not even be on the ball. Look at this. Watch him. Right. Dude, you're six seven, and Ace Baldwin's six foot. Like activity. Is this cold and tie? Is this lack of communication? Because yeah, it's it's lack of communication, and and honestly, after this first one happens, it should be like okay, all right, you got us. We're staying attached to shooters. You're obviously using Hicks as a as a screener. Baseline out of bounds. We're you know we're switching. We're switching, especially with with Hicks. It could just be for Hicks, just so that you don't have like a situation where, because I mean, you play this out, you switch with Rogers, okay? Hicks comes out, and if the principal's to switch with Hicks, then in theory, Danger would have to switch out as well. And then now you got to make sure you don't have this slip mm-hmm. to the basket. So regardless, like you could find the perfect way to do it, but. If you just talk and play hard, man, yeah, I, I I promise you, you will cover up so many mistakes. Like this, this could have not even you could have this blown switch, miscommunicate, whatever it is. And if Terrence isn't just like a statue on the ball, it doesn't even happen. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like it's not just one guy or two guys. It's it's a collective effort right now. And if you notice, with like I'll show a bunch of there's. You know, Terrence is an incredible player. Terrence will will be an NBA player. Uh, Terrence had one of his best games uh, offensively, I thought, you know, since he's probably in his college career. But when it gets to, like, the, you know, the four-minute mark, the 16-minute mark, the eight-minute mark, the 12-minute mark, when it gets close to those medias, like, that's when you see some mistakes from Terrence. And he's tired. And I get it. He's flying in transition. But just, man, like, just continue to dig deeper. Like, I know you can do it. What I was going to say, Mike, like we're talking about the effort and focus part right now. That's where leaders got to emerge. That, that's where that's where Coleman, Terrence, even yeah. if it's high at, at times, that you get, those guys got to step up and demand it from their teammates. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And and, I, and whatever you got to do is the staff, too. Like, that's on to me, that's on the staff as well to where, you know, part of coaching, you, you want a player-run program for sure. But part of coaching as well is making sure that, okay, how can I pull the right strings here? Is it, is it benching guys? Is it, you know, whatever it may be to try to send a message. Like this is just this, this stuff, you know, is uncharacteristic of a Brad Underwood team. Yep. From when he was at Stephen F. Austin, from when he was at Oklahoma state early on in Illinois, even those, you know, those teams that won big 10 championships here, you know, big 10 tournament championships. Like this was not the identity. And I get like portal NIL, all that stuff, things change, but you know, finding a way to adapt. All right. They're using Hicks as a screener again. And I've noticed this too. Okay. So they send, they send a guy to wrap around. Harmon stays, send another guy to wrap around. Damasco's over, you know, and I, they probably went over this play. I'd imagine in scout team. Right. But at some point, you just got to be a basketball player. Okay. Like you got bit on a baseline out of bounds. And if I'm Luke Goody, if I'm any of these guys and I see Hicks standing here as a screen, I'm thinking, okay, he's going to be a screener to eventually come off somewhere, which means they're going to dive someone to the basket. Someone's going to slip to the basket. I got to be smart here. So if it's Goody being aware of like, okay, absorb who's coming around. And then, like, if you have to switch out with Coleman, you can once Hicks goes off. If it's DeMass saying, okay, they just cycled one guy through, Iowa runs somewhat of the same play where they circle guys around. Like, DeMass, you see it right now. Mm-hmm. You see it. Like, I know you're taught to trail, but, like, you have to be a basketball player as well. And you just – you take the long route. And then Luke Goody – I, Luke Goody has been basically benched at times for his defense – and shoot, he's he's coming in there now, and he's like, I for sure will not give up anything. But you also got to like, you can't allow that to make you like a selfish defender, right? Because <laughs> here, Luke Goody, and he's like, all right, stay attached, shooter. What's the assignment? Goody has no idea that this guy's dunking. Watch this. Look, he's so worried about Hicks, which granted he's a shooter, doesn't care about a bump, nothing. 
Still doesn't know. Still doesn't know. Still doesn't know. Still doesn't know. Fighting hard. I mean, the ball's like getting dunked right now. Mm-hmm. Right? But you can't fall into that as players being like, well, it wasn't my guy. I feel like we've seen that a lot. Yeah, like, well, if, if coaches start benching guys for defense, like, ah, uh, like, now maybe I don't overhelp here because if I overhelp a little bit and this guy hits a three, am I getting taken? Like, just play hard, man. Play hard and communicate. But here's when Nick Kern started really going, I don't know. So Penn State's running this action where it's really just – this screen from Wahab is just kind of BS because you're going to be in drop anyways. So whether he screens here or not, it doesn't really matter. The What matters is this handoff between Kern – and Baldwin, right? So it becomes a switch. I The switch is called by the guy who is either receiving the ball or setting the screen. So in this case, it's Kern. So I, I can't tell on film here if Damask is saying anything. Doesn't really look like it. But I'll, I'll, I can only just assume that he's not saying anything. Because if Luke Goody heard switch here, his he would end up like this. Right. And there's a lot of this. Mm-hmm. A lot of like, oh my God, we're switching. Yep. And that's a major issue. Because you get these guys coming head full of steam. And I don't know, like I, you know, Coleman had such a great stretch where he's active with his hands and there's a little bit less of that. And Mike, 15 minutes left. He had one foul. Yeah. Like, I I, I just use him. You like, I, I, and I'm not saying to foul. Like, I just, you never know. I mean, you, you had 11 steals in a two game stretch. Eight of them were in drop coverage. Right. And you got a foul called maybe once. But that, that's what I'm saying. Like, you can be aggressive if you're, if you're Coleman. Like, I'd rather you foul than give up that stuff. Right. And I know we talk about, like, how important Coleman is and how, like, him being on the floor is. Like, that's more so, you know, first half, you pick up a foul with 16 minutes left. Now you got 14, you know, it's 13 minutes left. All right, let's be a little careful. Yeah. But one foul with 15 minutes left, that's a different yeah. story. Correct. So, all right, we get a switch up top. Here's Baldwin with Goody. Switch again. All right. I I don't just I clearly Goody's icing this, mm-hmm. keeping Kern on one side. I just is like is Coleman yelling anything? It's hard. I mean, it's hard to tell. I I at least know when I watch film and I see Amani Hansberry, like it's it's visible. Like you can see him yelling. But it's just kind of like, since he's gone into this like rover position that they have on this five, I feel like he's kind of lost his bite a little bit. Disengaged, yeah. And Goody gets way too far behind here. I get contests and like tough twos. That's not tough two, nope. right? And you could, I mean, this is like perfect. That's a perfect clip right there. Like, you look at his eyes. Like, he's dialed in. He's yelling. And I'm not saying I'm play Imani Hansberry 25 minutes. I think that would be a disaster. But should at least tell you – I mean, you just look at it right here. Watch him. Talking, talking, pointing, yelling. Close out. Okay, and, and look, at the, look at the time. Okay, 12, like 12 and a half minutes. Getting close to the media. Just keep an eye on Terrence here. That's horrible. Mm-hmm. And he knows it. He knows it. Dude, I watched you at Maryland. <laughs> like, I watched you on Jameer Young. That's bad. Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, one thing for Imani is that you cannot get – like, you just – you got to be a little bit wider here. Like, he gets too narrow of a base here, and that's that's tough. Like, Ter- Terrence has got to understand, man, I got a freshman in here with me. Like, I, I definitely got to fight over. I can't put him in a bad spot. So, again, they get the Wahab screen. It's just fluff. Like, you don't need to do anything there. 
I just like what I, I don't know what's going on here. It was almost like they were confused by the alignment, but it's just a double drag. And Rhodes, you know, Rhodes ran some good stuff. It was just to if they're like, hey, if they're gonna switch, let's confuse the hell out of them. But you just have to talk. Like, look how many off like what? Like, look how many off balance guys there are. Mm -hmm. And finally, there you go. Like Marcus points. Stay there. And it's amazing what happens. But, you know, Luke gets put into the stanchion. And and trust me, I've been there. <laughs> I've been there. You know, current it is. You're playing as a guy who's got it going at this point. Mm -hmm. Right? So, here they go. I Look at this. this. Forget Wahab. Forget Wahab. It's like these, all these guys, look at, that's just, what is that? All these guys, the crazy thing about this is that the guys that look surprised by the switch are the ones that are supposed to be calling the switch. Mm -hmm. It's not the guy who's guard. You can't guard the ball, see what screens are coming, and yell switch. That's why they have the guy who's either, you know, coming up for the handoff or coming to set the screen. That's why it's that guy's job. So look at like T Terrence. It's just right now. Switch, 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 switch. And I guarantee you, if you yell that out, it'll tell yourself to kind of step out here and get in front of Kern. That tells me you weren't ready for it. Mm -hmm. you're like a way too good of an athlete, man. And it's you're just you're done. Way up line. Yeah. Hold on. So you can you can kind of see the theme here. I don't know why. Hold on, synergies. All right. So he gets again. What's the clock at? Mm -hmm. Eight. Like, come on, man. I just watched this. Eight oh nine up eight. You know, media is coming. You got. We'll get you a breather, man. We'll get you a breather. Just look. I I get. I'm telling you. I know he's tired. Mm -hmm. You he, he was lightning in transition. Okay, but like, give me. You know, give me. Just keep telling yourself, man. Can I get 20 more seconds? 20 more seconds. 20 more seconds. Just kiss. Just convince yourself of that. Because this is just. I, I don't like. That's horrible. It's awful. It's just bad. Like if there's no sense of urgency, talking. Just no awareness, right? And just like think about the ripple effect here. You get Brown. Brown hits a three. He's feeling himself. Who's the guy that made the yep. shot to go to make it 89-85 in yep. transition? Yep. Brown. And I get just I know how shooters work. If he didn't get this one, I he is he is probably still confident, but not as confident when he shoots that one when it's 89-82. So all this stuff matters. We can talk about the we can talk about the end of the game, last two minutes, three minutes. This all that's why they say every possession matters, everyday guys, all that's all that stuff. That's that's why. Because does he shoot that one with as much confidence in rhythm, or does he doubt himself, hesitate, and just a different shot, maybe miss? He probably doesn't even shoot it. Yeah. <clears throat> all right, now we're getting the coughing bug. Here we go. Come on, Mike. You got Come on. <laughs> Hold on a second. Hold on a second here. Two minutes and 20 more seconds, Mike. I got this. All right, I got this. Here we go. All right. This is what a good possession looks like. Good, Luke. Good. And I like that. Like, you got use your size, lean into him, be physical. Mm -hmm. Boom, knock him off his spot, uncomfortable, turnover. Okay. Again. What in the. 
That, that is does Harmon switch. This is Harmon yelling this out. If they are switching, which I would imagine Damask Harmon, that's a switch. Switch, 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 switch. Can't let him beat you like that. You know, and great from Luke. Yep. That's not, I mean, I talked about before. Luke had, Luke at one point had a propensity to be like, you know, kind of flail on rebounds and he kind of got a habit of that. And that is just, that's just going and playing hard, man. Mm -hmm. That's good. All right, 78-70. Okay, ice. Good. Fight over. Good. Keep the ball in front. Level off. Verticality. Contest. I mean, I said I said in the beginning, there were stretches where Luke Goody was your best defender, and that is great thing for Luke, not for the rest of the team. Yeah, no, that's all. I think it's awesome for Luke. I thought he came into this game, he did less thinking, he did more just playing and being who he is, playing tough. But there are too many good defenders on this team. Yep. Your defense showed up for like a two and a half minute stretch here, and you and you went on a seven zero run. I think it was 75-70. And what happens when you get stops? You get in this dude's hands, right? And then you get layups. I thought that was a huge sequence. I thought that was a winning sequence. Yeah, 82-70, 5-20. Okay, and, and like, what are you fighting here? Are you like, is it a, ugh, okay, oh, we're good. Or is it like, man, like, like this is the time to turn the screws up even more. Yep. Right? Step on their throat. End it. Good. It's a good switch. This is bad from Terrence. Okay. I know you're switching. I got, all right. I got Hicks. What's happening? What's happening? Shooter. I, I should probably stay attached. Probably stay attached. Man, just think about, oh, we could talk about the last two and a half minutes, three and a half minutes. I, I, I'm telling you, like, if this shot misses mm -hmm. and you go down and go up 14 or you go down and go up 15, like that's why it's so important. Well, and who hit some big shots at the end? It was this guy. Yeah. So I get it. And, and look, you're switching. You got to know all the personnel. And I guarantee you that Terrence knew that Hicks is a shooter. And that's how they're, that's how they're, you know. So he lets Harmon through. That's fine. But just trail. If you just if you decide to trail here, because I don't love I don't love going under on a stagger. That's way too much space, and you allow Hicks to do what he does here, where he can kind of I mean he doesn't even really sit behind it. So you got to do you got to do one of, I, to me it's one of two things. It's either it goes to Terrence or you know once it goes to Hicks here and he's coming off, you either got to. Go over from the beginning or go under, then go over on Wahat. Like you got to like split this gap or I, I don't know. I mean, you still get a decent contest, but that's just Hicks knows it. As a shooter, you know it. Like when you separate here, when I, if I'm Hicks and I'm a shooter and I see you out of the corner of my eye taking that route, I know I'm good. I know I'm six eight, six nine. I can just rise up and shoot this. But if I don't see you and you're trailing me, I, then maybe I, I don't – there's a little bit of paranoia there. But that's a big shot. Mm -hmm. It's one to forget for Harmon, man. Three or four times off the ball. Yep. What's that, what's that – what's the reason for this? You, you, can't be, you can't be higher than the level of your man here. Like if you're going to be higher than the level of your man, then you got to be have more depth. Right, like you can't be higher than your man and simultaneously still close, like still close to him. Like you have to be able to see ball, see man. Because right now it's like it's cooked. Yep. And and it's it's what's crazy too is it's not even transition. So once that ball start again, I talk about flowing to the ball. Once that ball starts going to the right. It's it's got to at least move to mask and goody a little bit, like a little bit. Yeah. 
The other thing I'm thinking of, Mike, this is seven, eight seconds into a shot clock. Make them work clock. All of a sudden, that has a ripple effect, right? Yeah, no question. That's so. That's just way too easy. I mean, look at this. <laughs> that is just. You won't see Houston do that in a two-game stretch. Mm-hmm. Okay. Still up seven with 240 left. That's good from the mask. Skip. All right, you got the matchup you want. Let's go. And to me, to me, this was the moment when I went back and watched it where there where I, it looked like there was a collective exhale. Yes. I mean, it felt like it from the outside, too. No, and I'm sitting there, too. I Really, like, I'm sitting there, too, and I'm on the couch, and I'm like, yeah, it's, you know, probably tighten up the defense a little bit, but, hey, you got a road win. Yep. Good. But, I, like, that could be my mentality on the couch. They can't think that. That can't, that can't be the case for these dudes. Right? Foul. I get it. Bench is hype. Everyone's smiling and stuff. But once we get back on that defensive end, let's crank it up. Let's crank it up even more. So Ty, so Ty came back in at this point, the 230 mark. Okay. And you know what? Like, It's not a crazy high percentage shot. Maybe it's higher for for a guy like Hicks. Are we? But, are you surprised Goody was still out there on the court at this time? I, With the way he really? <laughs> no, I wasn't because at at times he looked like the only guy that wanted to do like try defensively. Yeah, and Harmon was. I think you you would have Harmon out there. But, I mean, he had four different times off the ball, three or four times off the ball where he let a guy back cut him for a layup. And you just can't trust Quincy right now. And you can't trust Quincy right now. So, you know, especially like late game, ball handling, I don't think Quincy's one of your better passers. Uh, that's nothing against him. He does a lot of other good things well. But, you know, I, I think it's hard. Like, I think the we'll, – we'll get into it here. Yeah. I was thinking about this. They took the lead with four seconds left. Like, in theory, if you hold on to the ball here for five more seconds, do you win that game? Like, domino effect? You also make it if Luke Goody hits his 4-3 of the game right here. Okay, the game's over. <laughs> right? It's a wide open three. I didn't hate this in the moment. In hindsight, yeah. I get it. See, the issue that I have with it, um, you know, if it goes in, it's like, boom, all right, game. And he was feeling it. So on, on that side of it, like, I, I kind of get it. Um, the part that is tough is you don't really have any rebounding help if if the ball were to come off, right? Yeah. Ty almost gets it still. I think Terrence could have given a little bit more effort on that, but – just kind of leaked out of there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but all right. Yeah, you got two minutes left. Okay, so Ty, Ty is obviously still in the game here. Harmon's the one that's out. Uh, this is the thing with, like, the personnel groupings at the end. I don't know who you wanted to play. Because no matter who was in – I mean, this is this isn't good from Ty. Like you gotta again, you have to be talking this. Switch, 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 switch. Like the pirouette stuff, there was like three or four times in this game where guys are switching and doing like a whole pirouette. And you just gotta close out under control if you're Ty. Any of these shots missed, it's over. Yeah. Any of them. I like Ty's intensity, but, but you know, those things got to get cleaned up. Like yeah. the, the switching, the bust that he's had in those. He just got, you know, he's, he just has to, you know, I think he plays hard. I think at times he overthinks things. 
he just needs to he needs to play, but also like find that balance between like, hey, I don't want to overthink, but I still need to like think the game here a little bit. Yeah. Right. Like they had no problem on this, like with a press break like this, again, you have guys down. It's not like the football alignment. Okay, like get the ball in. They want to trap. Cool. Swing it back. Advance. All right. Rhodes is obviously going to play it out. You know, and this is this is they they've been good with this late game where teams are so worried about a Damask or a Terrence, so they load up and they get all the way kind of on the midline, and then Damask can, can drive a long closeout. That's a great drive. Mm -hmm. Foul. But even here, you're like, man, okay, yeah, exhale. Yep. 89, 82 with a minute 12 left. Again, like what, the switching is, has been very – worrisome like it's justin switch 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 and he still runs with his guy and eventually he gets back like again if you're playing hard if you you know you can figure it out you can get back tough shot get a good contest all right now this is where i exhaled <laughs> to be yeah. honest. i was like that's the stop they needed it's honestly like even going back through this for a six or seven time, it's it's like it's pretty it's pretty hard to believe. Yeah. I mean, 35 seconds, seven points. Like how much needed to go right for Penn State and how much needed to go wrong for Illinois and how much Illinois I think contributed to that. Yeah. Is just is crazy. And how about Mike Rhodes, man? Just hey, we're not fouling. Yeah. Play it out. I think he knew they could score on him. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I don't hate it. I don't hate the shot. You get two. I mean, it, two Grab guys it. basically run into each other here. Yeah. He had a chance for an offensive rebound. Gosh, That's, I mean, that is literally what's so crazy is that is like a potential Big Ten title right there. Yep. All right, not to be dramatic. Did Colby get too aggressive there? What's that? Did Coleman get too aggressive there? Did Coleman get too aggressive? Yeah, like on that leak out after the rebound. I I, I think – let's go back. Tried to swipe at a steal. Well, that, yeah, that sounds – that sounds like – sounds like Coleman. Yeah, he's got, he's got to – he's got to figure out the way to – Right, like right here. Yeah. No, I, I – yeah, no, totally. Totally. He's got to that's he's got to stop that. For as many steals that he's gotten, how many of them have been of that variety? Because it just put Marcus in a pick your yeah, it's a tough spot. He's got to protect the basket. Yep. And now you got a guy pulling into a three. Uh Football. I just don't like this. I don't I don't like anything about it. I don't like it. I don't like bringing four guys into the backcourt. And I don't know. This is this is crazy to me. Either one of two things. Either they are telling them to intentionally jog or these guys are just jogging. I mean, this is – watch this. And the fact that they don't clear out and they jog like this, you burn one second basically doing that. Mm -hmm. And then you don't have five seconds. You really have four seconds, so that's three seconds now you have. To throw it in. Like, watch these three guys. Mm. <laughs> and I don't know if it's like, hey, jog so that – you get the attention of Kern so that it pulls him out a little bit so that Terrence can run in. Yeah. But like, it's kind of like reading the defense here. Like, I understand that the play is to get Terrence in a foot race to sprint over here and get the ball, but Brown knows that. So this ball kind of has to go to Damask. Yep. But he, does, he doesn't see him. But you get the ball in, right? And the third thing that I'll say – is that that's actually it's another possession it's not even this one and i thought at this point terrence and i say this as a guy that like especially in high school like when you're scoring 30 40 you know and you've, you've been like going to the foul line and stuff you were like completely playing for the foul yep and like the second he caught the ball 
he's throwing his head back and like thinking he's just going to get a foul called, splitting the defense. Yeah. And should have gone right back to Harmon, right? Yeah, right back to Harmon. They did it. I mean, they did a couple possessions ago where they inbounded it, just threw it right back to the inbounder to Rodgers. As right. great as great as Terrence played last couple minutes were not good for him. Yeah. And I think I think this was an opportunity here for for I don't know, for a timeout. I mean, I know they I think they pretty much end up calling one anyways. Yeah. But you don't really get into anything. And in this in these moments, so I talk about like mentality, right? And it's hard, right? Because you you know, we can all sit here and be like, man, you got to want the ball, demand the ball, want that moment, be confident, you know, catch the ball, be strong, get fouled, make free throws. If if I'm Luke Goody, go. Go. Right here. Hands up. Be big. Like, want that. Because there's really nothing here. They go for the timeout, but like. You don't have to burn one. It like once the C parts, you gotta be an outlet here. Mm -hmm. Run up, like ah, like give me the ball. Like I want this moment. Give me the ball. Catch the ball. Get fouled. Make free throws. Let's go home. Yep. But it was just kind of like ah, uh, like Marcus or Terrence will get it. You know. So like, I just think little things like that. And now you know you get some more space. Like. Maybe a little bit more. Again, we're three seconds into this, aren't we? <laughs> again, like if if these dudes are gonna break off, this is my opinion here, right? If these dudes are gonna break off left, right, you need to have a middle outlet. Like someone has to be sprinting here. Someone. Cause then all you're left with is the corners. Mm -hmm. And you know they're trapping. And this is this is after a timeout. So that's that's one of the adjustments is if you're gonna go one, I, I'd maybe even start these guys further back so they can get a head full of steam. But one, like if you're gonna if you're gonna have sides, guys break off to sides and you vacate the middle, use the middle. Someone someone's got a flash here. Like no one wanted it. Yeah, and then you burn. Like, think about the, you know that's exactly right. And you think about it, man. You burn that time out. Now when they they make free throws with four seconds left, you got nothing. Yep, you got nothing left. Penn State's fired up. So they're still, you know, they're still bringing people into the backcourt. You know, you're, you're vacating Harmon deep to be able to bring Terrence in sprinting in. But the problem, I think, and you know, they're kind of doing this to begin with, but. You know, when you bring all these guys up and you just you kind of just allow Penn State to to zone up a little bit. Like, hey, just point, pass off. But Terrence, smart, right? Find the opening. Because like I said, they're zoned up. So Brown, although he in theory should go with Terrence, they're they're in like a almost like a little diamond here. And he's worried about, you know, they kind of bust that. Yep. So I I like that. I do like that inbound. It's definitely it's definitely different than the football alignment. But cool, like you get it up. This is, <laughs> this is probably a travel. Like if you want to call it his left pivot foot, it moves. Right pivot foot moves too. Sure did. Um, but shoot, man, you get you know you get a gift. You get a gift and didn't do anything with. It. Don't connect on either of the free throws. Now late, they're definitely switching one through five, especially when they go small with puff at the five. Okay, and good. You get the switch, level off, and, and this is unfortunate, man. And Coleman just loses his balance here. Like right at this moment, he is off balance. He's falling forward, and he couldn't. He just couldn't stop his momentum. And it's just, it's tough. Everything that could go wrong. Yeah, like I almost it almost I I don't even know if by, by looking at this when Ace Baldwin flips this, he swings his right foot back, and it looks like it almost connects with Coleman. Mm -hmm. And yes. it's like, was it Murphy's Law? Yep. Yeah. So they needed they needed every bit of that, and Illinois, you know, Illinois helped them out. 
but I mean, this isn't love the look. Yeah. And yeah, can you imagine? I, I was thinking, I was like, are they going to win this game now? Like it felt like the basketball gods were trying to tell them something, but, and they did. So look, I think, I know that was, that was a bit long. So I apologize. Um, so what? Let, let's let's go here, Mike. Yeah. Obviously, effort, focus, intensity has to be better. Yeah. But the staff has to make adjustments. Like we we saw yeah. a little bit of it in Maryland. So personnel, schematic. What are the changes? I think. Well, the, it's hard because I think I think what they're trying to do is is base things off of like who's playing well defensively. Because I think that honestly, I think that's why Goody was in the game. Because Harmon wasn't engaged, um, you know, Rodgers at times was kind of off kilt. Like, but for for this staff, especially late, like I think a lot of this falls on them late game, where you know what you're drawing up out of you know baseline out of bounds, who's the inbounder, um, all of those things. You know, I, I thought from what happened at Nebraska to what we saw at Maryland, this felt like reverting back. Like I was encouraged by Maryland because it looked like progress. It looked like steps forward. And then you revert back here. Um, so for the players, it's it starts with just mentality, right? Like it's not just set it and forget it. It's not just, hey, you know, we're 10 and four in the Big Ten and uh, we're playing Penn State and, uh, oh, we went up 12 and you can't play that game. It's, am I on the court? Am I wearing the jersey? I'm playing my ass off until someone comes and, and gets me out. What's the scouting report? Let me get dialed into that. Okay. And then for the staff, I think you like I think you have to understand, and I hope that they do, that just because you have an older, older experienced team, there's still steps that you cannot skip for continuity. Like older and experienced is not just like, cool, we can roll anyone out there and they'll be fine. Older and experienced should be, hey, I've been in enough wars. I've switched enough on defense. I've, you know, played drop coverage enough that like I know what is required of me. Right. That should be what older guys do. These guys aren't doing that. And I think it's on the staff to try to get that out of them, whether that's taking away playing time, whether that's, you know, making adjustments to where you're going to have to compromise on something. I like, I think they are scared to death of giving up threes. So that's why they, they, they want to go back to drop coverage, drop coverage, won the game against Maryland, but this wasn't Maryland, right? It's a new game. So can you, can you adjust and can you say, okay, you know, Penn state, uh, like they're, they're two wins, two big 10 wins prior to this. They made 12 threes. They beat, you know, Iowa, they beat Indiana, um, so maybe you want to keep them off the three point line, right? And but I, I I will I will say that the times where they they were more aggressive, I, I thought it brought more aggression out of the guys. But and really, and but I think the um, they're also scared of getting some of these guys in long closeouts. Quincy Garrier, you know, even Marcus Damask in some situations. Like so, it's it's I I think you just have to figure out how to instill just like a, a toughness factor, mentality factor. Like, I think that's, that's, that's probably even more on the staff than it is on the players. Like they got it. They have to figure that out because if you're like, you can't do this thing where like, Hey, you know, dial it down, dial it up. Okay, cool. It's the, it's the, it's the playoffs. It's the tournament. Like this isn't the NBA right. where you have a seven game series to figure stuff out. All right. It's single elimination when you get to that point. So, it needs to happen now because if you if you do this dial up dial down thing, you're you're building the wrong habits. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it's it's worrisome because you. Have, I, I mean, I I watched the Marquette game again. Now I watched even the Florida Atlantic game. Even like there's there's more bite, right? There's more thought. There's more talking. There's more like what, and and it's almost coincided with this burst offensively, mm-hmm. where it stops, Mike. Got that Terrence Shannon, 16 points in transition in one game. Yeah, and like it could be it could be more. 
Honestly, like it could be more. And I understand that like you may be tired, you may be, you know, from getting up and down, but this is like basketball could be taken away from you at any point. Right. So leave, I don't know, it sounds cliche to be like, leave it all out there and whatever, but like the focus, the mentality, like that's, that's where this all has to start. And it's, it's all the way across the board. Mm -hmm all the way across the board so you know and you got an iowa team coming in now that they're probably watching this going well, we're gonna score 150 mm -hmm. and and if your communication is bad with them if you don't locate shooters with them if you don't locate cutters with them like i, I want to see fran mccaffrey those baseline out of bounds places and run damn near the same thing it's the circle action they run guys in a circle they think you're going to trail they vacate the help and they shoot layups so will you adjust next game? Will you say, hey, we're switching? Especially when Coleman's in there at the five. Let's just let's switch baseline out of bounds. Right? Like those are the adjustments you want to see game to game. And if they aren't made, like this, this, this team's ceiling is going to be severely capped. Um, you may be able to like offense your way through the first round or two, but if you have actual aspirations of going deep, if you play defense like this, you ain't gonna make it four to five games. You just not. Um, because there's going to be another team that dials in defensively. Um, so yeah, yeah, I know that was a lot, but yeah, I just know a team that has Coleman Hawkins, Terrence Shannon, Ty Rogers, Quincy Garrier. Like they should be better defensively. Hundred percent. I mean, I did, like from January first, you're 140th in the country in two point defense, and you were second up until that point. It's inexcusable. That's Mike uh, that's impossible. Yeah. Michael Tua, thanks for making us basketball smarter as always, man. Appreciate it, man.